Kiki, the author behind Living Without Fear and is the co-publisher of the Amazon best-selling Inspired Journeys. If you are ready to embark on a journey of boundless possibilities, I'm here for you. Do you know someone who could benefit from today's episode? Share this podcast with them. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, join me on YouTube, and if you enjoyed what you heard, leave a short review or rate it on your favorite podcast platform with a lot of stars. Your support means the world to me, and I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. And today I'm so excited to have Terry Lee with me. She's a mindful coach with over 20 years of experience in yoga. She helps people navigate tough times like divorce, job changes, health issues, or loss by guiding them with mindfulness. She sees these challenges as chances to grow into a better version of yourself, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Not easy, but amazing. Terry is like a wise friend who can shift your perspective, help you deal with stress and calm your busy mind. Whether you're going through big changes, she's there to help you make the best of it. She's taught over 200,000 students and worked closely with 2,000 clients. Terry has a master's degree in teaching and loves understanding how the brain works. She shares practical and scientific ways to help you grow personally. Welcome to the show, dear Terry. Thank you for inviting me, Esther. I'm really honored to be here. Wonderful. So let's start with the first question. What has been your turning moment in life? <laughs> I thought about this question a lot, and I think we all have many turning points in life. So then I thought about your theme and that being fear. And really, I think the biggest turning points in life come with this overwhelming fear that we either have to face or fight or flee or deal with. And I, I think the one turning point I want to share with you is when I had my biggest fear literally slap me in the face. And that was the moment that I realized that I was getting a divorce, that my current marriage at the time was dissolving. And literally that happened when my husband threw me over a chair, hit me and said, F you to my face over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I write about this in my memoir, The Gift Inside the Wound, which is the story of the very first chapter is that episode, that story of what he did to me. And then the ensuing chapters tell the story of the next six months of my life, where after that moment, I had to leave him and then I found myself homeless, living out of my car and figuring out where do I go next? And to give you a little bit of backstory, I had been married for almost 11 years and we were both very deeply rooted into spiritual path mostly surrounding yoga, but we had also together gone through an intense African shaman elder initiation. So we were both elders in this African tribe. And he had become so shifted by that elder initiation that it, it almost skewed with his, um, his way of being. When we got back from that elder initiation, he went into meditation practice where he would meditate 18 hours a day. And he, he stopped working his normal job at the level that was, he had been working before he dropped down to part-time. He would get up at two in the morning to meditate until he went to work. And then he'd go to work from seven until 11 in the morning. And then he'd meditate from 11 in the morning until midnight or one. So he was really only sleeping like one or two hours a night. And he wasn't engaging in any kind of marriage. And finally, one day I said to him, 
and trying to get him to go to therapy and trying to talk to him. And I was managing everything about our lives and not having a relationship with him. I said to him, do you want to be a monk or do you want to be married? And he got angry. And this, this forceful monster came out of him, something I'd never seen in him before. And he, he got fierce and he literally grabbed me by the shoulders and threw me over a chair and hovered over me. It was like something consumed him. And he kept saying, F you, F you, F you. And at that point, I just said, get out, get out. And I eventually got myself to stand back up and he stood up in front of him. And I just kept pointing at the door, get out. And he wasn't leaving. He was just F you, F you, F you, and threatening to hurt me some more. And like, that was not just the fear of having a man beat me, but also the fear of this is my husband. This is a man I love. This is the man I committed to loving in sickness and in health for the rest of my life. And he, he turned into this monster. But then the realization that if he can hurt me like this, I can't stay. And then the realization beyond that of, well, I can't stay means I don't have a marriage. My life as I know it is over. And because he had the higher income in the family and he, he had the money from his mother. I couldn't live in the house. I was the one that had to move out. He refused to move out. And so I had to move out and I was making only a thousand dollars a month. So I moved into my car mm -hmm. and my whole world shifted then. So the answer to your question is the biggest turning point in my life was when my husband threw me over a chair and said, F you. And I had to face not only the fear of someone physically hurting me, but the bigger, more monstrous fear of what's my life like now? Nothing can be the same. How do I reconstruct myself? And I really believe our biggest turning points are the times when we have to face and endure and process our greatest fears. And the turning point, the gift inside those wounds, which is the title of my memoir, is what happens as we process through and rise up stronger than that fear. Mm. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> so, how, Terry, how did you get over it? <laughs> that is an absolutely huge question. Um, in the beginning, I thought I wasn't getting over it. I completely fell apart. And I think that's human and I think that's normal. I, I crumbled. I, you know, the first thing I did was I called my mommy <laughs> and my mom and dad came over and they held me and they soothed me and they nurtured me in the immediate moment. But then over the next coming days and weeks and months and even years, I had to figure out how to piece my life back together. And there's the big answer of, I did these big things. Like I moved into my car and I signed the divorce papers and I figured out a new way to facilitate my job, but that's all big things. I think the true answer to that question, how did I get over it was dealing with how do I change my internal structure in the same way that my external world is changing. And that answer is very little disciplined practice every single day of the practice I had learned through my yoga experience, through my shamanic training, the practice of turning within myself and saying, who am I despite all of this? What are my values? What is my core? How do I stay true to that? even when all this chaos is happening outside my, my inner world. And so that, and that practice of tiny little things, it was daily reminders of I'm okay. I mean, I literally put post-it notes up all over my car and in, in my journals and told people I love to tell me you're okay. Just that two word affirmation, re repeating that affirmation to myself mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And then linking that affirmation, I'm okay, with a physical action, a, a yoga practice, really, a physical action of standing on my two feet, 
mm. pounding those two feet in the ground and reminding me, myself, Mother Earth is here. I'm okay right now in this moment. I'm taking one foot, putting it in front of the other, and I'm okay in that walk of one step at a time. And grounding into myself, saying I'm okay, grounding into my feet and breathing with that. And I created, prior to this, I was in the process in my work of creating what I now call the Mosey Method. And the Mosey Method is a series of exercises that help people to tune into themselves that people can do all day long, many, many times a day, because they only take 10 to 30 seconds to complete. And so I had to apply the Mosey Method in my life every single moment I felt shaken by what was happening to me. And so every time I felt not okay, I would stamp, stamp my feet into the ground. I'm okay and take a deep breath and remind myself, look around. Well, I don't have someone throwing me onto the ground saying F you. Right now in this moment, I'm okay. I'm not getting beaten. Right now in this moment, I'm okay. Over and over and over again. And once I got through that, where I started to realize, yeah, I am okay. Then I could take a step up and find, okay, there's joy in this, or there's peace in this, or there's growth in this. And I had a different exercise each step up, which is the Mosey method. That's what I teach to my clients. But in that time, that turning point in my life, I had been developing the Mosey method and I was forced in that moment to start using it in a really big way with myself. And to this day, I still use it every day. I use it many, many, many times a day. And I teach it to all my clients and I've walked many, many clients through their own major life event, divorce, leaving an abusive relationship, getting forced out of a job that they loved or getting forced out of a job that they hated or making that personal choice to leave that profession or that career, retiring, empty nest, losing their children and not knowing what their identity is after their kids are gone and grown. I walk my clients through that Mosey Methods process of little tiny exercises to ret return to your truth of self over and over and over again. Mm. Wonderful. Would you mind sharing just a little bit of your method? Maybe the listener needs just a little bit of your help and maybe they can use it just for their day. Well, I feel like I just said that where like if you're having a moment where you don't feel okay, you physically stand up and square your feet on the floor underneath your hips and stop, stomp your feet. So you can really feel the floor like vibrate up into your legs and up to your hips almost. Stomp, stomp and visualize, wait, this is Mother Earth. She's underneath me. Mother Earth never, ever, ever lets us go. Every time you pull a foot up, she pulls it back down with gravity. We are always supported. We are always stable by Mother Earth. So if you stomp, stomp your feet in Mother Earth, you get that vibratory energy up into your bones. And as you stomp, stomp, you say, I'm okay. Mother Earth holds me. I'm okay. And take a deep breath because the deep breath, that's the key. The deep breath is what soothes your nervous system. The deep breath is what lowers your heart rate. It's what lowers your blood pressure. It's what returns you to a baseline. But the three steps, I'm okay, deep breath, stomping your feet. That will make you feel okay if you really activate, and if you're a spiritual individual who really believes in the power of nature, it has that much more impact on you. And if you are not such a body related person, maybe I, I was very much in my head and you couldn't have helped me with this exercise, for example, years ago, what would you do with me? that's the that's the trick even <laughs> if you're a heady person putting it in your body is what makes it work so 
this would have helped you. This does help you. You just have to do it. And it's that try level approach. It's not just the affirmation. It's the affirmation with the body action that matches the affirmation with the breath. It's body, mind, spirit all linked into one 10 second exercise. It's taking what you're thinking in your head, making your body actually do something that matches that thought and then moving it through your whole system with your breath. And it changes your nervous system. It changes your mindset. It changes your attitude. It changes your perspective. And when all those things change on the internal, then you can address what's happening on the external with more clarity, more confidence, more assertion of how you're going through life. Mm. It does work. You just have to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Like, if you don't do it, it doesn't work. It's like they say in AA, it works if you work it. (laughs) Yeah. And how about the fear? I mean, it has been tremendous, the shock that you had this monster in front of you. How, How did you recover that it won't happen again to you in another relationship? Oh, it did happen to me again in another relationship years later. However, that second time it happened, I knew I'd already gotten through it and I can get through it again. I had a, a not just renewed, but an amplified strength in me because I'd already beaten this monster once. Well, I can beat it again. And after that relationship, I was like, oh, now I see the warning signs. I was able to see, oh, I fell for the same thing more than once. Well, that's not what I want. I want this over here. And that's part of how the brain works. The brain goes in patterns and habits. So I had this habitual pattern of the type of relationship I just thought I wanted. And that involves someone who could turn into a monster. And after the second time of beating that monster, I made a shift in my brain, a conscious shift by doing the Mosey Method exercise over and over again in a specific Mosey Method exercise to shift my perspective on relationship. And years later, I attracted a relationship that is an ideal partner for me. And I've been married now for four years in this really awesome partnership with a man who is not capable of the monster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I forgot your question, but the idea is that if the you fear that it's going to happen yeah. again and again. Yeah. If so- you're doing the Mosey Method exercise you, and the Mosey Method steps, you get to a point where you have confidence in yourself with where you know, even if it happens, I can manage it. I can face it. I can deal with it. And there's different types of monsters that I've faced since then. You know, I, I got fired from a job. Well, at that moment, because I'd been doing Mosey Method exercises for several years up until then, when I got fired, yeah, it hurt. I was pissed. But I was like, I've been through worse. I can do this. Because I've been doing that internal work every day, many times a day, reminding myself, I'm okay. I got this. I can figure this out. I figured out other things. I've got it inside me. Wonderful. And what would you recommend people if they have other fears about, I don't know, fear of yeah lo- losing a partner but not through through a monster <laughs> having a monster in front of you but maybe losing well, it well fear of loss of mm-hmm. any kind of loss is a very common fear and the answer is if you are constantly rechecking inside yourself Reminding yourself of your strength, reminding yourself of your confidence, reminding yourself of all the things you have accomplished so far, and reminding yourself, I can figure this out. It doesn't matter what the monster is, whether it's loss or abuse or rage or death. It doesn't matter what the monster is. If you have this practice of tiny little things you do all the time, it becomes this automatic response, just like the automatic of doing these tiny things of, yeah, this is scary. It's a big, bad 
huge, ugly thing that I have to face. Yet I do these little things and I'm okay in my, inside myself constantly. And we can't make fear go away. You can't make anxiety, poof, gone. These things are always going to be coming at us from the outside world. The answer is, how do you respond to them on the inside of yourself? And if you are doing things every day to remind yourself, I got this, I can figure this out, I'm strong enough, I've been through things that are different but similar, I can manage. That's where the magic happens. And that happens in tiny little incremental ways. You attack the big monster with tiny baby step practices. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You know, one tiny little bite, I got this. Another tiny little bite, I got this. Keep doing that tiny little bite. I got this, I got this, I got this. And how do you cope with people who are not, maybe not very nice with you? Just normal people, but they don't treat you nicely. How do you cope with that? It just came to my mind. I don't know why. <laughs> <sighs> Compassion. The answer is that they are probably not feeling very right with themselves inside themselves. And that's when the anger and the rage. I mean, what you just asked was the same That was what I was dealing with when my first husband attacked me. He was not being nice to me. How did I deal with that? In the moment, it was a boundary. Get out. I cannot engage with you when you're like this. But at the same time, there was a compassion for him of he was not in his right balance centered, I'm okay state of mind in that moment. And he was telling me, I don't want you here by FUing me all over the place. So I was like, fine, I'm out. But you get out too, stay away. There's boundaries there. If someone's telling you, I don't want you here, then trust them, listen to them and walk away. And at the same time, find that compassion for, oh, they're not feeling that centeredness in themselves right now. I know what that feels like. I've been there. And they may not have the practices to return to their center of self, but I can't give that to them. They got to do it themselves. I can show them how, but they still have to do it themselves. And so my husband, my first husband, he did, he went off, he found a new life for himself and he did eventually become a monk. And as a monk, he was much happier. He re reconnected. It was his meditation space that he would connect with himself. And His choice was to go to a place where he could live that 100% of his life. He's happy now. Go for it. So with anyone in life, when people come at you with that kind of monster energy, the first step is I have to protect myself, boundaries. And then the second step is I have to make sure I stay centered and calm in myself. And then the third step is from that place of centered and calm, I can feel love and compassion for them as they're not in that place of centered and calm. Oh, that hurts. I know. And you'll get back to your center and calm somehow your way. Is there something else, Terry, you'd like to share with our audience about getting around Difficult times, difficult moments, difficult people. I think the big answer I want to, the big message I want to point out here is you can't fix it and make it go away. The fear monsters will never go away. The anxiety is always there on some level. It's necessary. We need fear so that we don't run off a cliff because it looks like fun. We need fear to keep us safe. Fear and big bad things will constantly happen in life. What we need to do is trust ourselves to come back to our center of self and say, I can manage, I can figure it out. I can find the gift inside this wound and I can grow from it. 
And there really is a light after every darkness. There are every, always is a dawn after every dark night. And so keeping that center of self through the darkness, through the monster, through the fear, rather than telling the fear to go away. Because if, if we try to make fear go away completely, it's just going to get louder. Just say, F you, <laughs> and throw you over a chair. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you so much, Terry, for sharing your story and also your wisdom with us. Thank you. And thank you, dear listener, for spending your precious time with us today. And in case you feel worthless and nobody seems to like you, we tell you, you're amazing. We love you. And you're a gift to everyone who crosses your path. And please tell yourself these sentences over and over again. Have an amazing day. And